students welcome to the e content lecture series on the subject botany today the topic of our lecture is taxonomy and diversity of poaceae as we all know that plants provide countless economic goods and life supporting ecological services to the human kind of various kinds of plants that grow on the planet earth grasses are important source of food crops it is in this context that today we are going to discuss the family in this lecture following aspects of the family poaceae will be discussed number 1 taxonomy number 2 systematic position number 3 phylogeny number 4 diversity and last and the fifth economic importance first the taxonomy as already mentioned the poaceae is commonly known as grass family the term poa is a greek name for a type of grass the family poaceae was first established as a formal taxonomic category under the scientific name gramini by al digisu in 1789 later on poaceae as an alternate family name was necessitated due to the typification rule of international code of botanical nomenclature at the same time gramini as a family name was also conserved due to its wide usage the family members of poaceae are distinctive in being herbs only the exception is bamboos which are trees they have hollow pith stems and have open sheath leaves with a ligule at inner junction with leaf blade they are also distinctive in having a spikelet in florescence the spikelet bears either one or in some cases numerous florets here the stigma is feathery and the fruit is technically called as caryopsis now we will discuss its taxonomy we will start from its habit the members of the family poaceae are mostly either annual or perennial herbs or sometimes they can be rarely shrubs or trees as we see in the case of bamboos when they are perennial herbs they are often with either rhizomes stolons runners etc now second the root as it is a monocot here the root system is adventitious the root system is often endomycorrhizal now the stem in this case the stem is commonly known as culm these are rounded or elliptic in outline woody textured in the case of bamboos the stem shows the character of hollow internodes but jointed and swollen nodes associated with silica bodies now the leaves leaves are mostly alternate but sometimes they can be spiral also commonly extubulate two ranked and they consist of number one sheath ligule and the blade the sheaths tightly encircle the stem into nodes and their margins are overlapping but never fused the ligule comprises of a membranous flange or a fringe of hairs at the ad axial apex of sheath the leaf blades are simple usually linear bifacial parallel veined and often auriculate at base now the inflorescence inflorescence can be either terminal or it can be axillary spikelets these spikelets are arranged into secondary inflorescences like racemes as we see in case of poa they can be in the form of spikes as commonly seen in triticum or they can be even form glomerule the spikelets are basically sessile or sometimes they can be stalked they are opposite or distichous on the inflorescence axis each spikelet is composed of an axis called as rachilla it bears two ranked and closely overlapping basal brackets called as 
glooms and the florets. The glooms are usually two equal or unequal in size, but they can be rare cases where the glooms are just single as in the case of Monera. Now the florets, they can be either one as we see in the case of Hordium or they can be numerous per spikelet as we see in the case of Pova. Each floret consists of a minute lateral axis with additional brackets. In addition to glooms, we have additional brackets here called as Lima and Pelia and then it is followed by a flower. The Lima is the lower and the larger bracket. It's typically with an odd number of veins. Second bracket, what we know as Pelia, is the upper one and smaller one. It's often translucent with two veins and it's partially enveloped by Lima. Most often, a needle-like on, which can be straight or bent, may be present at the apex of either glumes or lima. Now the flower. Flower in the case of Poesi is very small. It is reduced in both in size as well as in number of floral parts. That's why it's technically called as floret. It's not pedicillate. It is a sessile flower and it's zygomorphic. The flowers are here usually bisexual. But rarely they can be also unisexual, as we see in the case of Zia. In such a situation, the plants can be either monoecious or dioecious. The flowers are often hypogynous, which are enclosed in Lima and Pelia. Now the perianth. As typically seen in the case of dicots, in case of monocots, we have no distinction of sepals and petals. Same is true for the poesy here the perianth, because we have the flowers, they are highly reduced. The perianth can be either absent or when it is present, it's represented by two lodicules. These lodicules are translucent and are located on the lower side towards the lima. Upon swelling, the lodicules function to open the floret by separating the lima from the pelia. Now the male part of the floret is called what we know as androsium. Androsium is composed of three stamens. Sometimes there can be six stamens also, as in the case of Oriza. Or their number can be more, as we see in Orandinera. The plaments are free and the anthers are usually sagittate. They are basic fixed to versatile. They are pendulous on elongate plaments, diathecus and longitudinal in descents. Here the pollens are monoporate. Now the female part of the floret, gynosium, is composed of three carpels, but it often appears just two. Why? Because we, here we see the reduction of one style. The gynosium is syncorpus, ovary is superior, unilocular, with one orthotropous or anatropous ovule. The ovule is bitegmic. The styles are here too, as I already mentioned that one style is highly reduced. Stigmas can be e either two or three, but a characteristic feature of poesy is the stigma or feathery, technically called as plumos. The stigmatic surface have the papillae, which are multicellular. And one more important character of poesy is that the placentation is basal. Nectaries are here absent. Now the fruit. Fruit is here single seeded caryopsis, wherein the fruit wall is fused to the seed. Seeds are endospermic and the embryo is with a highly modified cotyledon known as cicutellum that is lateral in position. The flowers of Poesi are wind pollinated and the fruit known as caryopsis it is often associated with parts of spikelet for its dispersal. Second part of the lecture is systematic position of Poesi. Two British taxonomists, Bentham and Hooker, classified this Poesi 
under the class Monocotyledons and under the series Gloomacy. Later on, Cronkist, an American taxonomist, ranked it at the division Magnoliophyta, class Liliopsida, subclass Ericidae, and the order Cyperales. Later on, a Russian taxonomist by the name of Orvan Takhtajan again ranked it at the division Magnoliophyta, class Liliopsida, but he gave a subclass Commonalidae and also recognized as superorder by the name Poeni and the order Poeles. Dahl Green, a Danish botanist, ranked this Poeci family at the class Liliopsida and subclass Lilidae, superorder Commonalidae and the order Poeles. Robert Thorne recently ranked it at the class Angiospermy, subclass Commonalidae, superorder Commonalidae and the order Ratio Nails. Very recently, Angiosperm phylogeny group, which is a collaborative group of taxonomists who have proposed a rankless classification, they recognize Poesi under the monocots and the subclade Commonalidae and the order Poeles. Now the third part of the lecture, that is phylogeny. Crosses are easily recognized because of their some peculiar characters. Also, their monophyly is well supported, both by morphological and DNA-based characters. Recent molecular systematic studies based on various genes like RBCL, NDHF, RPOC2, ITS, granule-bound storage synthase 1, and phytochrome B sequence data are in close conformity with many phylogenetic hypotheses that were inferred from morphological data. At present, 12 subfamilies are recognized in the family Poveci, which include the three earliest diverging lineages, namely Anomoculidae, Pharoidae, and Pulaidae. Then followed by one more subclade, so called BEP subclade. Here, the B stands for Bambusoidae, E stands for Aerotoidae, and P stands for Poeidae. Then it is followed by a subclade called as Pacate. P stands here for Panicoidae, A for Arundinoidae, C for Chloridoidae, again C for Centricoidae, A for Aristoidae, and D lastly for Danthonoidae. These are the 12 subfamilies presently recognized under the family Poesi. All these families are monophyletic in nature. The earliest diverging families like Anomocolidae, which is native to Brazil, was previously included in the subfamily Pombusidae. However, they are clearly distant from the other Poesi groups because they have a unique inflorescence which does not resemble characteristic spikelet of crosses. The other two earliest diverging families, Peridoidae and Peridoidae, were also traditionally included in the subfamily Bambusoidae. However, they also differ in having single flower in Peridoidae and multiple flowers in Peridoidae. Now the fourth part of the lecture that is diversity. When we talk about number of species, Poesi basically ranks only just behind Estraceae, Orchidaceae, and Fabaceae. That means it is the fourth largest family in the world in terms of species richness. At present, the family is represented by about 650 genera, having more than 9,500 species. Some of the species rich genera in this family are Poa, 500 species, Panicum, 450 species. Pestuca, represented by 430 species. Paspalum, 350 species. Stipa, 300 species. Bromus, 160 species. Elimus, 150 species. Bambusa, 125 species. Cetaria, 100 species. These were some of the species rich genera in this family. Members of this family, they show a cosmopolitan distribution. If we start from poles to equator, we see everywhere grasses growing. If we start from sea level to the mountain peaks, everywhere we see the grasses. Not only in all types of 
altitudes and latitudes, but also in all types of climates and habitats, grosses are everywhere. Grosses are basically important components of many terrestrial ecosystems, particularly grasslands. For instance, in the North America, we have prairie. In South America, pampas. In Africa, we have wells. In Euro-Asia, we have the steppes. These are the different types of grasslands, where the main component is the grasses. These different grasslands, which I mentioned, they account for 24% of the Earth's total vegetation. One more type of grass that belongs to the family poesy is the woody bamboos. They play a crucial role in the forest ecology in tropical and temperate Asia. Now, the fifth part of this, this lecture, that is the economic importance of the poesy family. The members of this family are of great economic importance. The paramount chief role of the family lies as a source of food. About 70% of the world's agricultural land is cultivated with crop species which belong to the family poesy. Over 50% of our energy intake comes from basically grasses. In fact, humans have been cultivating cereals which are the grasses, such as rice, scientifically named as Oryza sativa, wheat, scientific name Triticum estivum, maize, scientific name Zia maize. These crops have been cultivated for at least 10,000 years and has made possible the rise of civilization. In terms of global production, I mean global agricultural production, the four most important crops are wheat, rice, maize, and the sugar cane. Some other food crops in the family include barley, scientifically known as hordium vulgare, pearl milk, penicetum glaucum, rye, scientific name scale cereal, sorghum, scientifically known as sorghum vulgare. These are some other food crops in addition to the cereal crops. Grosses are extensively used as livestock forage crops. Some of the major forage grasses are andropogon, agropyron, phalum, etc. Grosses such as cynodon, agrostis, they are widely used in our lawns and in making turfs. Sugarcane, which is basically a grass, is a major source of commercial sugar. Grosses as a source of sugar are used in the fermentation of alcoholic beverages such as beer, whiskey, etc. The grass, which has a tree habit called as bambusa, commonly known as bamboos, are used extensively in construction works, wicker work, roof thatching. The edible and young bamboo shoots, they are used as a source of food or they can be used as a source of fiber for paper industry or pulp for rain making. A grass by the name of lemon grass, scientifically known as Simpopogon, its leaves are distilled to yield essential oil. The mature grains of a grass, commonly known as job steers, scientifically known as coex, lacrima, joby, they are used in making necklace beads. Dear students, with this, we come to the end of today's topic that was taxonomy and diversity of family poesy. Hope you have enjoyed the lecture. See you again with some another topic. Till then, goodbye.